Saved it. So, uh, in terms of crop staging right now, if we talk about all our crops, uh, corn is like head high. Uh, I'm not sure I'll go into a field. I'll maybe do an update uh, on the corn and soybeans uh, in the next week. Uh, not much has happened with them other than they've just been growing. Uh, soybeans are flowering now, which means they're going to start making pods uh, that uh, make the soybeans that we harvest uh, in the fall. But uh, corn is close to tassel. Uh, that rain, as I said, we got here Friday uh, was a game changer for us. Uh, we still have some issues uh, with the corn. Uh, some areas got a lot of rain, some areas didn't. Uh, but we're pretty comfortable with what we got and we're heading into tassel which is a very critical time for yield uh, because what the tassel does is it drops the pollen down to the corn cob uh, where it's formed and it goes through a silk tube and yada 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 i'll show you that uh, in another video uh, because i'm not going to waste time talking about it uh, right now uh, because it could be a video all on its own it's always kind of exciting as we head into a, harvest uh, especially weed harvest and that canola harvest uh, because that's basically our report card on how well we did now our report card is influenced very significantly significantly by mother nature she rules the roost uh, we can do the best job we can as managers and farmers to uh, get the crop going uh, as best we can uh, but it always is in the hands of mother nature to do what she wants with it uh, and uh, she's been a little cruel, a little cruel the last little uh, six weeks to a month. But uh, she blessed us with some rain uh, just to show that she doesn't completely hate us, which is good. So I'm just going to head to that wheat field and we'll talk to you there. So we're at the wheat field here. Oh, stupid auto exposure. Oh, anyways. Let's ignore that. Uh, I'll hop out and do a better job portraying my wheat field. But it looks good. Uh, we were probably hit with the dry weather uh, and the yield's gonna be impacted a little bit here. Part of my absence from YouTube was that uh, I was working some, not long hours, but long days. I spent a lot of time spraying this year. We've been really struggling with weed control and our edible beans. And also, uh, we had an armyworm infection here for uh, this wheat field. Uh, this is the only wheat field I actually had to spray an insecticide on because the pressure was high enough. It was going to impact yield significantly. And what armyworm does is basically just eats all the leaves off the wheat plant. And when it gets really bad, it actually will clip the wheat head right off the stem. And we'll take a look at what that looks like. But... Uh, so we actually had to spray this farm, well, which is I hate, I hate, absolutely hate spraying insecticides. But sometimes we just do not have a choice. Uh, when the pest is at economic threshold, we're uh, spraying the product actually uh, warrants an economic return and saves us yield. Uh, we very rarely spray insecticides. I think in the time I've been home farming since 97, uh, we probably have only sprayed insecticides well, if I just say the last 10 years, maybe twice. Um, some in the corn, and I'll talk about that uh, in a corn update video. Uh, but army worm and wheat, I've never sprayed for. Uh, this is the first time I ever had to do it. Uh, and a lot of it's because of dry uh, weather we had, but also a mild winter uh, that didn't really kill pests or diseases. And uh, we're dealing with that this year, uh, just because it wasn't a harsh enough winter to kill some of those. So. Uh, we'll walk out in the wheat field and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, I should really cut my ditch banks, but it's good habitat for stuff. But this is the wheat field. I'm going to flip you around. It's a little windy. I apologize. And I always see, <laughs> wheat always makes, I hate wearing shorts in a wheat field. It just itches the heck out of my legs. Uh, but this is a field that's probably closest to harvest. And, uh, it really turned with the rain. And I'll just flip you around to see what I'm looking at. So this is a wheat. And as I know, I know when it starts to mature because what you see here is we call it cane, canes over. And it looks like a cane, the wheat head. Here's a better example uh, where we get this 
hook shape of a cane. And what that's saying is that uh, the peduncle, I think, or something like that, here has kind of senesced and it's dropped and the kernel, kernels are senesced, they're done filling. It's reached physiological maturity and it's time to harvest. And uh, we thresh them out a little bit. I got a kernel here and I'd bite it. And because of the rain we had, it's uh, a little moist still, moist. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at. In terms of army worm, I don't know if I'll see much damage in here. But uh, as the crop's maturing, here's a flag leaf, which is the last leaf before the head. And what was happening was that they were eating this flag leaf. And that's where a lot of the yield comes from for wheat, uh, it and the head itself. Uh, so if we start losing the flag leaf, uh, we really start losing yield. Uh, so that's why we had to control it. You know, here's an example, and it's hard to tell where one was starting to get chewed on. So we, uh, as I said, had to spray an insecticide kind of the middle of June, June 20th, I believe it was. But the stuff is close, very close to harvest, which is exciting. Yield, I don't know. Uh, I had high hopes earlier in the spring uh, because it looked good, but then we went through this dry weather. But this here is always a good sign. Uh, it's kind of laying flat, which means it's kind of heavy uh, and there's potential for yield. Uh, you don't want that happening in the field because uh, we had some of that last year, but it kind of looked pretty good. So I'm happy. I think my guess is 90 bushel. I would like 100, 100 is always better. Uh, I'd be surprised if we get 100. There's just uh, enough weak spots, like right here is kind of a weak spot, but it does get better out here farther, so I don't know what we're gonna get. But yeah, here's kind of an example of a leaf that army worm got, kind of chewed her up pretty good. Not much left of it. So, that's it. I'm going to get the drone up. I got a fungicide trial in here. Uh, we spray a fungicide to protect the head from disease uh, that we did at heading time when it was flowering. Uh, and that was in one of my latest videos. Not lately, but one of the last ones I did before I went on hiatus. And uh, we'll pop up the drone and we'll see if we can pick out the different fungicide treatments. I could see it from the road the other day. I'm just curious if I can see it today now that the stalks have dried up a little bit. This variety we're growing in here, it's a soft red winter wheat uh, for cookies and crackers and stuff like that. It's a new variety. We've never grown this one before. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious on how it ends up. Uh, we're a little cheap. I'm not going to lie. We save our seed. We're allowed to as long as we follow the uh, rules set out by kind of our government in conjunction with the seed industry. We're allowed to save seed back uh, for our own use. So we tend to do that because depending on fall weather, we never know how many acres of wheat we're gonna plant. And as a result, uh, we buy some certified seed, but we also keep some back just to help cost on the farm. But pretty exciting that we're close to harvest. So we got the drone up here looking at the wheat field and uh, yes I can see the difference in fungicide. So ahead of us is uh, a new fungicide that was available this year to use for winter wheat and uh, it's been touted to have very good uh, I guess you would say stay green or uh, plant health. It helps the plant stay healthier longer. And uh, it's hard with the um, cloud cover, but you can see right here, as I go towards the middle of the screen, uh, there's a line right here, right in the center of the screen. That's the two fungicide, uh, two differences in fungicide. So on the left is a, a fungicide that's been on the market for a couple of years has 
couple modes of action uh, to help with leaf diseases and wheat uh, that you spray at heading like uh, the other product. And on the right is this new one that uh, was available this year for the first time. So uh, it'll be interesting to do some yield comparisons uh, with it as uh, we uh, combine this farm. Uh, we wanted to do uh, some comparisons just to see uh, what different products uh, we're going to work or and, and if which what which one's better or not we like to do a lot of comparisons But I just found it interesting that we can actually see this uh, to the line uh, where this product was sprayed and It's quite interesting We'll just go for a drive uh, I shouldn't say a drive a fly so that's kind of the line. The interesting part too is uh, when we're putting new products in the sprayer, um, I didn't do a rinse out with this one uh, because it's kind of a wheat product. Uh, I've, they're fairly, most fungicides are compatible with each other for the most part, depending on formulations, but uh, I just kind of ran the tank out and then put this new fungicide in once the other tank load ran out. And there you can see right where I started. It's hard to see there, but kind of in the middle of the screen there is when we started probably the new one. And as we went into the field, you could actually see how the boom primes right in the center of that sprayer track. It's kind of hard to see. You start to see a V form and that's just the product uh, moving uh, from the tank uh, to the outer boom sections. Uh, so that's why we always prime our boom uh, after kind of doing a sprayer clean out or going to new products because that's how long it takes before the product actually gets uh, to the hole with the sprayer and it, it barely did there you can just see uh, as it was kind of finishing up there but uh, it's interesting to see kind of the differences in the two fungicides I wanted to kind of document this uh, for my reference and just to uh, know how they're performing but that's kind of the differences now here uh, along the edge of the field it's a little darker but that'd be overlap from 28 um, just the way the sprayer sections worked out but it's uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see the differences in the product. In the far top of the screen, you'll see a really dark strip. We'll go over and look at that, but that's the untreated check. We also like to leave a section that isn't sprayed because uh, that helps us decide whether uh, spraying was actually really worth the time or not. And we, what we call this T3 fungicide timing, it's always worth it because we're trying to maintain quality of the grain because it's actually for the most part used in food as a flower so we don't want toxins in it like I talked about the toxins in uh, that we kind of spray against for corn but uh, it's a kind of the same disease dawn we call it uh, or vomitoxin but there's the unsprayed check so it kind of gives you a pretty good idea of what the health uh, what it does for health on the wheat plant. Uh, you know, right along the edge of the field is uh, the one fungicide product, and then you can see where it gets white again. Uh, it's the, uh, the new one, and then there's a check strip in between them. So, pretty cool stuff to see. Uh, there's one other wheat field I might pop into to take a look at, uh, where we actually have uh, a fungicide we sprayed at uh, flag leaf time uh, which we typically don't spray at flag leaf uh, on our farm but uh, it's a trial for our chemical company that uh, is trying to look at some disease uh, control at t2 timing which is flag leaf and surprisingly enough we actually did have uh, a fair bit of uh, powdery mildew issues around that time so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the yield is on that but uh, yeah that's the fungicide trial that we have here with the two different uh, fungicides so 
Just because it looks better doesn't mean it's going to yield better. Um, but it's nice to kind of use a drone here to kind of do uh, record the differences in how the treatments look and if that uh, visual difference actually uh, equates back into a yield difference. So just cool stuff I thought I'd show you. Uh, some of the stuff I pay attention to when I'm uh, making decisions on the farm and um, you know what works and what doesn't work. But uh, yeah, that's it. So as I said, my guess is with that wheat, it's probably, it might be ready to harvest uh, kind of by the weekend. Uh, today being Sunday, so maybe seven days from now, six days from now. Uh, as I said, the rain really tends to bring on crops. It tends to even them out. Uh, this little corridor uh, here got uh, probably the most rain of, uh, of all the farms we have. Uh, the home farm got, as I said, inch and seven tenths. So this is kind of in that window where only uh, maybe a half mile kind of west of the farm and the storms kind of went north south. So I think it got a fair bit of rain. Now walking in it, you wouldn't even know uh, just because we were so dry. Uh, so I don't have a rain gauge there. I do have a rain gauge there, but I forgot to take it out last winter and the frost busted a hole in the bottom. So I did put rain gauges in other farms. Uh, this one, once the weed's at that stage, rain doesn't matter anymore. It's more of a harvest hindrance. Uh, so it's not critical to know how much rain that farm got, but uh, yeah. So we'll go look at this other wheat field and uh, I'll probably end up wrapping up this video at some point uh, after we take a look at it. So I'm in this other wheat field uh, where I have a fungicide trial. And kind of in the center of the screen there, you can see a dark strip between the two sprayer passes. That's the start of the experimental fungicide. And it kind of goes all the way over for three widths of my sprayer. So it's kind of in this corridor here uh, that I'm in. And then I actually have... Uh, a check strip kind of between the two sprayer passes but with the cloud cover today it's a little hard to see and this stuff's still pretty green uh, this fungicide that I sprayed is kind of has the same characteristics of that new one I used at the other farm where it was kind of a, a lighter color of wheat straw um, this one's going to be known for its plant health characteristics as well so it's kind of a showing up a little bit uh, greener in that corridor uh, which I'm not surprised by. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick up the uh, untreated area because it's actually in the center of the screen there between those two spray sprayer passes and I think it's hard to pick up because that fungus side that we sprayed at uh, you know T2 timing which is flag leaf that's really helping with diseases. But as uh, I get up a little higher, you can see that it's a little darker between those two sprayer passes. And then when you get to the left of that dark strip there, uh, it didn't have the experimental fungus side. So it'll be interesting to see um, how this product does. Uh, we always kind of worked with chemical companies to just look at uh, new products, see how they fit on our farm uh, and do some stuff that way and uh, I always appreciate the opportunity to work with new products and kind of get a crack to see what they look like um, before uh, they hit uh, kind of commercial production but uh, this wheat field looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with it it's all standing up nice a little bit drowned out spot there in the uh, left side uh, from the winter but battery level is low the aircraft will go to the home go home well that concludes today's festivities. My uh, drone just uh, disconnected from my remote, so I can't see it. Well, I can't see it. Flying by sight now. It's never fun when your drone decides not to work on you or disconnects, so don't know what happened there. I better get out and rescue it. Saved it. Uh, that's why you should always keep an eye on where you're flying a drone, which is the rules. Um, yeah, that was a close call. But I guess that will wrap up uh, my scouting because uh, my drone's battery is dead. 
Ugh. Do you ever like hate technology some days? Stupid thing won't, there, finally shut off. Um, so yeah, that's kind of today's um, back video. A little crop scouting, a little update on the crops. Uh, I haven't really got back to people in the comments from the last little, uh, last few videos I did back in June. Um, I'll try to go through them, uh, but I guess my goal is, or my effort is that, uh, kind of this video on, I'll, uh, try to answer as much as I can and, uh, uh, and try to get back to people, uh, in the comments, uh, specifically questions. I try to answer questions first and then uh, I'll look at comments kind of after that. Uh, so I'll try to answer your questions. Yeah, it felt good to do a video. Um, yeah, I feel a little bit better about doing them. Well, I shouldn't say a little, I feel a lot better. Uh, crops are pretty good. Um, I think I'm just gonna, as I was driving around this morning and looking at crops, I think what I'm gonna do is as I do some of these corn and soybean um, scouting videos or updates of what the crop looks like. I'm going to insert some of the footage I have from uh, before kind of I have about three videos that I didn't I never really finished that I could put into uh, their own video but I think uh, in the interest of just trying to stay updated and keep you along for the journey I'll insert that stuff as we get to a corn and soybean scouting video and uh, probably with the edible beans I'll do one specific to it as well. So I think that's how I'll do it. Uh, and I guess just want to say thanks for your patience. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy. And uh, stay tuned to the next one. Thanks.